Do you have a slap tear? Were you diagnosed with a labral tear? This video, we're gonna go over exercise that you can utilize to maintain the healthier shoulder that are gonna be as specific as possible to the throw. So we can really maintain the healthier shoulder, improve your function, and ultimately get you out of pain so you can get back to throwing as hard as you possibly can and performing at the highest level. I'm Max Wardell, OverheadAthletics.com. Listen, I've had a shoulder injury. I've had a slap tear. I managed it conservatively. I was told by surgeons that you need surgery. You're never going to throw again. Guess what? I was able to throw again. In fact, I was able to throw as well as I did prior to my injury without ever getting cut open. The possibilities, we're not going to put a ceiling on it. We don't know where you could be with a little bit of skilled intervention. I always advocate that you're under the umbrella of medicine. You're being seen by an orthopedic surgeon. You're being observed and cared for by a physical therapist. But I want to go through some stuff that you can be doing on your own, in your home exercise program, to get your shoulder as healthy as possible. And a lot of times these things aren't addressed properly in formal rehabilitation because a lot of individuals don't have experience working with throwing athletes. And that's just the unfortunate nature of medicine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through exercises that we utilize all the time in our guys with slap tears that have been proven to be successful historically in our guys with slap tears that are going to get you back on the field. We're going to go through four different exercises today. Keep in mind, the most important thing that you need to do is ultimately improve the sequencing of your throw, put your shoulder in better positions than the throw, improve your mechanics. It has to be built upon a foundation of stability, and that's what we're going to go through with these exercises. So, number one here on the side, sideline external rotation. I see this done all the time, and I see it done incorrectly. I'm going to show you first how to do it improperly. I have a two pound dumbbell right now, and I could probably do a 20. If you can lift initially more than a two or three pound dumbbell, I'm almost guaranteeing you that you're not doing the exercise properly, especially if you're someone with a shoulder injury, which indicates to me that your rotator cuff is probably not strong enough because I'm yet to see a throwing athlete with a slap lesion that has a rotator cuff that's strong enough to endure the stress of the throw. So here's what we're gonna do. You can put a towel under the arm. That's always effective. I recommend it often with my athletes, but it's not necessary per se. What I need to do first is I need to bring my elbow forward. So before I do anything, I bring my elbow forward a little bit, then I roll forward. So now my elbow is a little bit out in front of me. From here, my chest is rolled towards the ground. I push my elbow down towards my pocket. I push it actively down towards my pocket, set my shoulder blade down and back, and now I perform the exercise. If you can feel your shoulder and your deltoid in the back of the shoulder is turning on and it's working too hard, you get a towel roll. And you might need two. You can tape these up if you're doing it all the time. You can take a water bottle, whatever it is, to give you a little space under the arm. Now you can throw this under the arm, put it as high up into the armpit as you want pinch down on it so i'm pinching it in driving my elbow down towards my pocket and my shoulder back so now i'm in a good posture my shoulder's not rolled forward i get my shoulder in a good posture i roll my chest forward and now i perform the exercise if a two pound dumbbell isn't difficult you're not doing it properly and this is the exercise i see done wrong most commonly trying to fight that end range now you can drop your towels. We're going to start to hit a little bit different portion of the rotator cuff. Here, start at the top, arms straight. You're going to turn your thumb down. If this pinches, don't turn it so much. It's not a big deal. Find that position where, hey, it doesn't pinch as I come down. I roll my, with my body, and then I row it to the top. It's called our deceleration row. So now I'm reaching out as far as I possibly can. I'm reaching that way. I'm reaching, 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 rolling, 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 and then I come down and up. Now, if this bothers your shoulder, like I said, you go into less internal rotation. You turn to about here. 
So now, instead of being turned all the way under, maybe I'm here, maybe my palm's even a little down. And then each time I do the exercise, I get a little bit more. So maybe I start here, then maybe I do it a, a few times there, then eventually I turn, 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 until I can eventually, over the course of two, three months, get my thumb rotated under. We call it our deceleration row because at the end of the throw, my arm, I release the ball, boom, the arm comes down and across in this fashion. And that's eventually where I wanna progress this. Higher up, more rotation up and under this way. So these are our two table exercises. Now let's go to two that you can utilize in standing positions that are gonna be very specific to the throwing motion. Now let's challenge the shoulder in a little different way. We gotta challenge some of the muscles that stabilize the shoulder. Here, we're gonna target the muscles that stabilize the scapula. Very important. We're also gonna hit some other muscles of the shoulder that actually work at the shoulder joint itself. So, I have a couple ways to do this. This is how I like to do it to start. Bent over at the waist. So now I'm hinging forward. Back is nice and flat, chin is tucked. From here, I'm going to turn my palms up reach up and forward as far as I can. Now I'm also, I'm not just reaching up to the sky. I'm also reaching that direction as far as I possibly can. And I have a little bit of stretch in my hamstrings. One, two, three, four, five, down. One, two, three, four, five, down. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe right now. We're going to go through two more exercises that I really like with my throwing athletes. One is an exercise, one's actually a mobilization. So stay tuned for that. But when we work on these exercises, it's important to utilize good technique. Why do we do a hamstring stretch with a flat back as we reach forward? Why? Because that's what happens at the end of the throw. So I have to be able to get my chest forward with hamstring flexibility at the same time that I teach the muscles of the shoulder blade to stabilize the scapula. So that's why we're doing it in this exercise. Now, I've spent some time working on the muscles that decelerate. I've spent some time on the muscles that stabilize the shoulder early and later in the throw, as well as some of the muscles that stabilize the scapula. Now, importantly for my guys with slap tears, I have them do some rotational work. Typically, we need to work on rotational work towards the throwing side. So allowing them to stay closed for a little bit longer. And there's so many things we could do with guys with slap tears, but we call these lifts because they're gonna have to rotate into their hip. Now, how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna get our band, whatever band we're using here. And you could technically figure out a smart way to use a cable column. I know you guys are smart, so here's how I would do it. This is the type of band we always use, Gray Cook bands. It's a plug for Gray Cook and performbetter.com, but we don't get paid for that. So I'm going to get into a squat. Why? Because I'm lo loaded into my hip early in the throw. Now, if I want to, I'm going to let my pelvis turn this way. There's two ways to do the exercise. I can let my hips turn or I can keep them stationary, and from here, I'm gonna lift up and across. So if I think core weakness is my big limitation or rotation away through my chest is my big limitation, my hip to shoulder separation, I don't move the pelvis. If I think I'm a little weaker through the hip, I'll preload the pelvis and then do it, or I'll do it at the same time. So I have kind of three different variations. This one's extremely challenging. This one's the easiest. This one's also extremely challenging. And you saw that I wanted to shift off to my front leg. I gotta keep my weight over my back leg. So now I'm working on loading my butt, loading my core, and I'm also working on shoulder stability. You see, I don't, I don't shrug my shoulders and do the exercise with poor posture. It's always posture and then through the shoulders. This is my four main strength building exercises. They're also gonna work on strength through the full range of motion, always necessary. If you have pain, you back off, go through a little less, less range. One of the biggest errors I see is athletes doing the exercise, how maybe even it should be done, but they're going through a range that has a painful arc. You have to stay in a pain-free range. Very important for all these exercises. Now let's go through one important mobilization that you guys can utilize at home. 
All right, let's work on the back of the shoulder a little bit. Sometimes we get muscular stiffness, muscular tightness, decreased range of motion, shortness of muscle fibers, especially in our older athletes. Sometimes we get some sort of neurological tightness where it feels tight, but technically the tissue is not short. And then we also get capsular. There's a capsule that surrounds the shoulder and sometimes that gets tight as well. So we can kind of use this exercise and we'll figure out what's going on and we'll really mobilize it. So here it is. I have two ways to do this. One is this way. I pull across my chest until I feel a stretch. I start to feel a little bit of a stretch in the back of the shoulder. I walk my feet out and roll this way so that now my scapula, my shoulder blade is pinned down against my rib cage. The other way I can do it is pin first and then pull up and across. You're gonna have to feel what gives you the best stretch. Now my feet are walked out this way so that I have pressure against my shoulder blade, pushing my shoulder blade that wants to do this. As I pull my arm across, you can see that it wants to come off. I'm gonna try to pin that sucker down to the body. So I have those two ways to do it. This is a really effective technique and sometimes you want to put a little padding behind your shoulder. If I'm going to hang out in this for a while, I'll do that. You notice that my hand is up this way. With my slap tear, if I go down, I'll feel it sublux a little bit. I'll feel myself, not necessarily sublux, but roll over a piece of the labrum if I bring my hand down. If you're able to bring your hand down this way and keep your elbow up as you do the stretch without any pain, popping, clicking, or you know, something where something's rolling over, it's probably more effective and specific to the throw. We've done other videos on stretching techniques such as a sleeper stretch. I think that's really, really effective with uh, individuals with tight shoulders um, and they have slap tears as well. But I like this one because it's really safe. Just pulling across. If you're feeling impingement here in the front, you're not doing it right, or your shoulder is not indicated for this stretch, in which case you're going to want to check out our video posterior capsule stretch for the shoulder that we've put on YouTube in the past. Like I said, you guys don't want to miss any of our content, so hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video.